Welcome to another edition of Hands On. My name is Ritesh and this is my Jimny Alpha. So today we are going to talk about a really unique and interesting feature of the Jimny. But before we go there, I want to say how grateful I am for all the love and affection and support that you've shown, the encouragement that you've given to my channel and the engaging comments that we've had. And in the meantime, I also hit my first thousand subscribers. So thank you for this great first big milestone. Truly grateful, truly elated. Okay, so today we are going to talk about a question that has come in the comments and multiple times. I look at your comments diligently and I also answer them. So this today's topic has been inspired completely from there. A lot of people have asked this question that whether they should buy a manual transmission or automatic transmission, especially on the Jimny, whether the manual transmission will be able to do the same job as the automatic transmission and vice versa. Will the manual transmission be too tiring in the city while the automatic transition transmission be able to give you the torque and power on demand that is required in off-roading? So a lot of questions. And I did some research and I am also wiser now. So before we move on to discussing the topic further, I do want to say that we need to keep in mind our history with automatic transmission. In India, the automatic transmission is fairly new. And when I say fairly new, it's only in the last four, five, six years that people have started buying automatic transmission uh, more than they used to earlier and therefore we don't have a lot of history with it and we don't know how it has evolved over a period of time but what we see today is what we what we get and the other thing is that there is this fear of unknown i feel that a lot of people who don't have experience with the automatic transmission and are comfortable with the manual they continue to buy manual because that is what they're used to that is what they're exposed to it that is what they're comfortable with so we are going to discuss and see how that works plus i also wanted to say did you know that the jimny automatic transmission can also work as a manual transmission more or less as and when you need it and that too without the complication of a clutch i am not kidding i am serious it does offer you those features and it is an example a practical example of wonderful Japanese engineering that we will see and I will explain to you how that works let's see how that works but for that we move inside okay first of all let's familiarize ourselves to the automatic gear shifter this is the automatic gear shifter and this is the park position where it normally is when your car is standing stationary now if you notice there are three buttons here that I want you to take note of one is right in the front which you press to move it from park to any gear right then there is one at the bottom which is called shift lock and we will come back to it later and there is one on this side which is called the overdrive button in the chimney and this button particularly is very interesting because this also gets its own light in the MID so if it is engaged, there is no light. And when you switch it off, just by it's a toggle switch, you switch it off and the, and the light comes on, which says OD off, the overdrive off. Okay, what it means, I will come back to it later. Okay, in terms of gear positions, there is P, which is park, R, that is reverse, N, neutral, D for drive. And then there is this number two, which is technically equivalent to the second gear in the manual transmission but not second alone, one and two really combined. I will tell you about it later. And then there is L, which is the load or low or equivalent to the first gear in the manual transmission. Simple. Okay. Now how this works in the Jimny, and I was saying that is the automatic is uh, comparable to and can sometimes work as the, the manual as well is this is how so let's say that when your car is in l now this car is technically 
in the first gear of of the manual right this car will operate with the same power and same rpm and torque as the first gear in in manual and this is most useful when you're doing steep inclines steep declines uh, very slushy very muddy snow situations um, or if you need power in in off-roading situation you're in a difficult maneuver and this is one of the questions that people have asked that in the manual in the automatic transmission will i have access to the power like i do in the in the manual transmission so this is your answer yes you will and also this will be useful when you are pulling either another vehicle towing it or if you are um, towing a trailer behind you right so this will be useful in those cases so the gear will be restricted to number one now if we put it in number two which means that at this position it will have access to both the first and the second gear and based on how much you are accelerating your car it will either be in the first gear or the second gear right so it, according to me you will get the best of both worlds because the car knows if it needs to step down and goes to for the first gear or it, it's on number two if if there is enough acceleration so there you get the the power of of the second gear and again you will use it for uh, inclines and descent maybe not as steep as the one that you'd use for the first gear but similar situations and also slippery surfaces uh, off-roading situations and things like that now the next one is d and that is drive and this is where you will drive your car most of the time when you're driving forward of course and this uh, switch that i was telling you about this is now this is what comes into play if we switch off the overdrive now this car is technically a three geared transmission automatic transmission which means that as we accelerate the gears will only operate between the first second and third because the od is off od is technically the fourth gear on this on this car so therefore you are technically now using only three gears and this will be useful in city traffic stop and go traffic in situations where there could be uh, a situation where it can go to the fourth gear because you get got some space to go but then it has to quickly come back to the third gear because you have to brake again so if you want to prevent that automatic changing to a higher gear and and therefore make it more efficient the rpms remain more stable and you get better uh, fuel efficiency in some cases if you're driving it you switch on the uh, od and now you have a four speed uh, either you can call it a manual transmission because this gear is up to the fourth and technically now there and or a four speed automatic transmission that it is right of course neutral is neutral and this is also one question that people have asked me that what is the difference between the p and the n big park and the neutral because technically both are uh, not in gear so what is it in nothing uh, in the neutral the your wheels are free just like in a manual car you can push the car if you need to and it can be towed if you are in that situation park just locks all the wheels so it is in a parking position and therefore not in gear and, and, and completely stationary reverse you are aware we don't need to talk about it right but one more thing i want to point out right here is the shift lock button now a lot of people don't know what this shift lock button is for but it is a very useful button so right now if we have to move to any gear from park i have to press this button and i can do that damn easily because uh, we have power but in case of a power failure which is let's say we have uh, the a dead battery i switched off the car just to show now even if i press the button i can't take it down and if the battery is dead you your car is stuck you can't do anything that is when this lock comes in you press that you keep it pressed and then you can shift the gear to neutral and 
lo and behold now your car can be moved it can be towed it can be this thing even without starting so very very useful button right again you see you can't do it but you can do it with that the one more thing that i want to share with you very quickly is that uh, if you're new to automatic like i am and i was struggling with uh, the gear shift because i was looking down at the gears and also trying to figure out if i was right gear by looking at the mid and stuff like that until i figured this out that from park if you have to go to reverse you have to press the button but from reverse to neutral you don't need to press the button it goes down one notch again you don't need to press the button if you're going to drive so you know where to stop and it won't go beyond that so if you're not looking and from reverse you're going to drive you just need to pull it down similarly from the drive position if you want to go to neutral you don't have to press the button you just push it and it goes and locks at neutral it won't go to reverse for engaging reverse you will have to press the button and go into reverse so this is a, i think a very uh, neat little information that will help you navigate the gears it certainly helped me because i didn't know and i was looking down and and trying to do it so so definitely something useful okay so one more thing a lot of people have reached out to me and asked me about how to use the 4x4 in the gym normally your 4x4 lever is at too high which is 2h so this is the normal position now maruti first of all says that you should not engage the 4x4 until you really need to you should not use it on normal roads unless they are slippery and and it is required otherwise it can damage the system okay let's come back to it so the 4h can be engaged on the fly which means that you can engage it even while you are driving we are right now stationary i'm at park then we just need to push the lever back and now we are in 4h which is four high and there is a green light which comes on which shows that the 4x4 is engaged okay now if you are in a trickier situation slush mud snow some off roading situation that demands you to do 4l you must know that 4l cannot be engaged while you are driving trying to do that will damage the system so for that there is a specific requirement the car needs to be stationary and it needs to be on neutral and then the wheels need to be straight for it to engage so then you press the lever down and you take it back we are now at four low and now to go back you just need to press it again and you come back to four high we are at four high the green light is still on and then back to two high in case that green light is blinking while you think you have engaged the four high or four low that means it is not been engaged properly and you need to repeat the steps again right i hope uh, this was useful uh recently i saw a video where this gentleman was uh driving and doing 100 kilometers on a borrowed jimny testing on 4x4 and on testing the braking on 4x4 god bless the jimny okay i do hope that all of your questions around the automatic transmission have been answered but if you still have anything do let me know in comments and we can take it from there do share this video with the wonderful people in your life who drive an automatic and could benefit from it by knowing all the wonderful features of 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 an automatic please subscribe if you already haven't because a lot of you still haven't and please press the bell icon please also follow me on instagram on hands on with babbar do have a hobby in your life be it gardening carpentry cooking or painting anything it will not only keep your heart happy it will also keep your mind happy try it until next time 
take care bye